Welcome back to Robin's Roundup with me, Jake Matho, Tom Langford and Sean Fisher. And today we're joined with special guest and Ashton United midfielder, Michael Brewster. How are you doing, Michael? I'm very well, thank you. Good, thank you for joining us on the show. We're going to go through your past, present and hopefully a bit of future. Um, get to know you a bit more, have some light-hearted questions and some fun and games in between. Um, I'm going to start with the past, looking back to what is an exceptional record of teams and stats that you've played for in such a young career um, and then we'll also touch on what you've worked as as a side to your footballing career but um, before we do that we'll go back to when you were a kid um, yeah. born in Manchester right yeah correct who did you follow as a kid um, City City, oh, City wow fan. I thought you were a United fan started with a bang yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fun and that's the after the interview as well, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. <laughs> so you're still a City fan, I assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just some of them tend to like flake out a bit after a few years. But um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. No, so when you were younger, were you always someone that wanted to be a footballer? Was that always an ambition of yours? Yeah, no, for sure. Like I say, it was always it was sort of involved in it for, um, from a very young age. Um, I think it was. I think it was four or five when I actually started playing, and I was always playing. It's generally the case with a lot with a lot of the lads as well. You you always sort of play up a few years. Um, I think I was playing up two years when I was younger before I was scouted for City, um, and then I'd, I I spent a good few years. I think it was like six in total years there before before they got the money and then got rid of me. So, um, but no, yeah, I spent like six years in the academy set up there, and then sort of moved on from there. We're like, we're, what were your parents like in your footballing career? Were they supportive or were they, was it very much an, like an individual type of thing that you followed? No. Uh, very much so. Very sort of um, make my own choices into, in, in that respect. I was never forced to do anything that I, that I didn't want to do. Um, but no, they was, they was always at the games, travelling up and down the country. Um, and then when obviously I was, I was released, I think it was the age of 12, um, I think my dad was more gutted than me, to be fair. He travelled up, <laughs> up and down the country, Sunderland away to watch sometimes like 15 minutes because when you're that age, you like do like sort of four quarters um, or how, however they work it. So you can sort of, sort of travelling all over the place. Obviously, we go on the team coach, but my dad's driving up to sort of come and watch and then you're only, you only getting 15, 20 minutes and it's, it's a little, little bit of a nightmare. But no, very worth it throughout. So. That's good to hear. Well, so when it was that you left, uh, Manchester City. What? How long was it before Oldham came for you? I then spent. So as it happens, I was at City and United as a kid, and then you sign your contracts when you're like nine years old. Um, that's when you sign your first contract. So you from you, you can play from like the age of six. Again, it might have all changed from 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 when it was, but you you can sort of play for the club from the age of six. And then I, I signed for City at nine. Um, ended up being released at twelve, and then I sort of went back to United a little bit but I, I'd sort of fell out with it during, during the um, whole process of how it sort of ended with City and I just wanted to sort of go back and play with my friends um, so I spent like four years playing Sunday League um, all the way up until the age of 16 um, went and played one game for the for Oldham's youth team as, as a sort of trial game and was offered a sort of scholarship from there so um, yeah no it was sort of late on really um, I think there was I think there was two or three scholarships left and I sort of got in at the right time I played one trial game and it was sort of a case of moving from there really so so you spent I've got it here that you spent around two years there would I be right in saying that? yeah so it's the youth team years yeah so your first year scholar and second year scholar so by the time that FC United the first club that you signed for after that yeah by the time they came for you was it a time that you had to move anyway yeah, so it's the, the sort of end of the how the sort of scholarships work is you get two years um, during your scholarship, your first years, you, you obviously the, the sort of younger age group, and then you move into the um, second years. And as it happens in my second year, I ended up breaking my leg, which is a little bit brutal. Wow. Isn't it? But um, yeah, that was towards like the back end of the, to the, of the season, and that's when you sort of get negotiated whether you get turned into um, and get a pro contract from there. Um, and that wasn't to be the case for me. Um, I think it was three that was given out the year I was there out of nine of us. Um, JP was in my year at Oldham. We, we sort of went, spent two years full time together there. Um, and no, it was, sort, sort of wasn't to be. And as it happens, me and JP both went to FC United at the same time. Oh, well. um, so, so we ended up we ended up there, but I, I sort of only spent a couple of months there, really. 
Yeah, you mentioned you spent only a few months there. What what made you go from FC United to Scotland? Because you know what it was. No, it was. I, I think I'd played only like one game for the first team at FC United. Obviously, I was like eighteen, um, and an agent approached me, and, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of agents to be fair. I never sort of really had a proper agent as it as it as it sort of as it goes, but um, sort of approached me and said. Potential for um, a trial game up in Scotland, playing against um, Motherwell. It was, and there's going to be a few different clubs there watching. He was taking like a, a squad of 15 up to go and play against Motherwell. Um, and for me at the, at the time, it was just all football, football, football. I wanted to be full time. I wanted to be sort of in and around the professional game. Uh, obviously, FC United was part time, and so I jumped at the chance. Really, um, went up there, spent a, it was like the weekend there. We did a a couple of training sessions and then played against Motherwell. It was off the back of that, then St. Mirren said that they wanted to take me down for a trial. I went down there and ended up signing for the rest of that season and it was like a 10-month contract, really. Was it one where you were optimistic about staying or was it one where it was pretty set that it was only going to be 10 months? Um, it was. It's just one of them. As the sort of season come to, come to the end, you sort of then looking to negotiate whether it's going to go on further or um, sort of move on from there. But again, and when I was younger, I was sort of, I struggled with injuries quite a lot, um, and and in Scotland, a lot of the games and training are they're all on four G now. Yeah. Luckily, I've sort of grew out of that stage, and, and touch wood, I've, I've sort of been all right in the sort of last few years. In terms of, I think it's last like sort of five six years, I've not really suffered with a with a sort of serious injury. But I, I don't know whether it was just too much too soon on my, on my sort of body, and and I was struggling with a few different things. I picked up an injury when I was there. Obviously, it was only a short term contract, so that's never going to really help my cause. Um, and for me, I kind of wanted to get back home, really. Obviously, I was living away at 19, living by myself, um, just in a sort of in, in a flat by myself, which the sort of club provided. Um, and I missed home, to be honest with you. Is that what made you decide to come back to the Northwest? Because then that's when you joined the, the, Southport. Yeah, no, there was, a, there was a few factors. Obviously, one being that I don't think there was a sort of a contract on the table for me, um, and, and two, I sort of wanted to chance my arm back in back in England, obviously, and sort of be closer to home. So you said about being closer to home. When Southport were on the table, were there other potential offers on the table that were further from home, or was um, it just Southport? No. So the season that I went to Southport, um, there was one of my old coaches from Oldham um, asked me to go down with Salford City at the time. Salford was in the Evo Stick Prem. Oh, I think it was going good. They just got been promoted and was going into the Evo Stick Prem. And I went, went and spent a week down there, like the, the obviously the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, it was, it was part time. Um, and then again, it's the same sort of situation, really. I just wanted to be back full time. I wanted to be sort of playing professionally, and, and Southport sort of provided that a little bit more, to be honest with you. Um, I did the first week with Salford and then went across to Southport, spent a few weeks pre season there, and then was offered a contract for the season. So. So you got offered a contract with Southport. Um, then not too long after that, you went on loan to Wales at Colwyn Bay. It was only for a month, I believe. Yeah, so yeah. Did yeah. you have time to like settle at the club, or did you find it different to being in England playing football, or was it pretty similar? Do you mean at Colwyn Bay or at Southport? Sorry. At Colwyn Bay, because you went on loan to Colwyn Bay in Wales, and it was yeah. just like, was there a big difference, or was it right for you? It was. It was. It was. Different, but a little bit more of what I was used to, to be honest with you, because in Scotland it was it was like the under twenty league. It's like your your sort of traditional under twenty ones in a way, but the, there's a lot more first team players get the game time in Scotland. So like fans come and watch. It's played at the stadiums, and it's it's not just at a training ground during the week when you actually have those games or of an evening. But um, obviously, when competitive football's got a bit more of an edge to it, suits, suits my game a little bit more, to be honest. Um, but no, so so it was, it was it served the purpose really. I went down, I think I played some about eight games in the month. Um, so yeah. it was perfect for what it was. You returned, you returned to Southport, and I've got it here that like you spent quite a few months at Southport before you went on loan again to another club, um, Skelmersdale. Was yeah. there what, at that point did you feel like you would rather have fought for your chance, for your place in the Southport team, or once again was it another thing of up in your game? Yeah, it was game time, and and, and I would I'd, I'd say the same thing now. Like for for anybody who's younger and they're sort of in with a club and they're not playing, it's get out on loan and go and play the games. Like I think at the the the, the, the sort of deal breaker for me was that was at Southport and we we played Dover away on a Tuesday night, and we uh, we travelled down on the day. We didn't stay over, 
Um, so we set off at nine, nine, nine a.m. in the morning. Um, played obviously seven forty-five kickoff, and then travel back. Didn't get back till six a.m. the following morning. And I was one of the spare men in the squad who wasn't even on the bench. So we obviously they brought an eighteen-man squad for a sixteen-man um, sort of thing. And I, I travelled down there and, and did a little bit of running after the game. And it was it was it was soul destroying. Um, and it was from that point, I just thought, obviously, I'm not in the plans. The new, I think, well, during the one season I was at Southport, it was three or four managers. Um, obviously, I was a young lad. I think it was the youngest in the squad. Um, they didn't really sort of get the chance to, to sort of play. And for me, I just wanted to get out and playing again because I enjoyed Colin Bay so much, just playing regular football. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, you then have played for several more teams, Northwich, Victoria, Shaw Lane you then went to. Um, it must not have been too long after you left Shaw Lane uh, to go to Marine that they closed down completely as a club. Yeah. How, how long were you at Shaw Lane for? Like, was the, Were you there enough to feel like you felt a bit reminiscent of the club when they were to close down finally, or was it not big enough an impact? No, the Shaw Lane, the Shaw Lane situation came about because um, the the sort of troubles North, which was in at the time, um, I was. They went into liquidation. I was. I think I was one or two or three players that was on a contract, and it sort of couldn't be fulfilled. So, um, Shaw Lane was in the same league as North, which at the time they were top of the league. They came in and said that they wanted to take me. Um, so I went. I went up to Shaw Lane. And it was sort of one of those where I was, they, they I think they'd won like 14 games on the bounce. They was flying, they was at the top of the league. Um, a load of players that had dropped down to come and play for them. Um, and, and I sort of knew I'd have to take my chance and, and sort of wait. And I was, I'd come off the bench a few times. Um, and then there was an opportunity to, to sort of play um, when one of the midfielders was, was suspended and the manager went and signed another centre midfielder to play. Mm-hmm. Um so it was then that point I just said, no, it's, it's obviously not for me. I'm not sort of sitting around and, and, and doing it when I'm not going to be given a chance. You know what I mean? I, I totally understand if, if I've got to wait your time to sort of get into a winning team. Um, I do understand that. But but when there's sort of an opportunity there and it wasn't it, it wasn't to be. So I'd linked back up with um, Tommy Lawson, who took me to Skelmersdale. Um, they was in the Evo Stick Prem at the time when I went to them from Southport. and played like the last two months of the season for, for Tommy at, at Skelmersdale and Played like 18 games, I think, um, in just over two months it was. And then Tommy had just got the Marine job, um, got in touch and said, you sort of want to come down. And, and I really enjoyed I really enjoyed Marine, to be honest with you. It was a great club, um, run really well, and, and, and Tommy's a great bloke as well. Yeah, no, that's good to hear. Well, Tom, when was it that Shaw Lane played Mansfield? Uh, it was the year after. It was, was the it? year after. Oh. I, did, I didn't get to see Michael <laughs> Brewster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you know Say that again. Was you at that game, was you? I was at that game. Um, I got called a scab by loads of people from Barnsley, so uh, oh, quite really enjoyable. Lovely that. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that like your favourite goal you scored, though? Oh, yeah. The yeah. overhead <laughs> kick from Danny Rose. If no one saw that goal, like, go watch it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that we'll be keen to show you is the, uh, the haircut Michael had at Marine. Oh. I think that's something we're going to pick up on a bit later on. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not far off that stage now. <laughs> <laughs> It was marine lockdown issues as well. Was that- I'm telling, yeah, well, I think we were going to the craze back then, but I kind of, I kind of embracing the girls to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm saying anything. Anyways, I'm, taking, I'm taking inspiration from you, mate. <laughs> I'm flattered. Anyway, back to this. You moved from Marine to Droylston, then you moved yeah. to Atherton. Atherton was the first place you signed and you worked under Clegg. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was that? Like, how did that come about? Was like, what was? Can you remember the first types of conversations you had with him? Yeah, no, it was. It was. It cut. It, it sort of. Um, he kind of sort of wanted to get me in the season before um, when when he was sort of. Um, I think it was like the last 10, 12 games of the season. There was when Everton won the league. Um, I, I first sort of touched base with Clegg then, and he was trying to get me trying to get me in and, and sign then. But I was on a contract at Droylston. <laughs> And it, it obviously wasn't to be. Um, that contract rolled over to the following season, and then um, it sort of come, come again for me. And it was a case of it was sort of the, the right time to, to sort of go and move on and, and move to move to Everton from there. Then, so it was it was the season before when he sort of actually had, had first sort of contact with Cleggie and, and, and spoke to him around it. But yeah, is that why? I assume it's pretty clear that's the, that's the main reason that drew drew you to Ashton. 
Because uh, you only played about 12 games, I think it was, for Everton. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. I went in, I think it was only, yeah. It was, uh, and it's, it's weird and it's, it's a sort of a, a sort of testament to, to, to the way it's been and where it's gone, really, is it feels like it's been years, do you know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. it sort of feels that way from from playing under under them all and, and sort of moving from club to club with them. But, I, yeah, it was only like 12 games that I think I played for Everton, like under just over two months it was. Um, really enjoyed my time there. And then obviously the, the sort of chance to move back across with with the management team and, and Ashton's obviously closer to home for me um, and it, it just made sense. So. Yeah, well, we'll touch on Ashton a bit more in detail in a bit. But a question I had for you is that you're only 24 years old and you played for 11 clubs after leaving the old and youth setup. Yeah. Like, do you, would you say that's more of something that's improved you because of your experience, or is it being something that's held you back because of the amount you've had to adapt to new clubs? I would I would always sort of say it's, it's held me back, really. I, I'd love nothing more than to be at a club for a good few years, and there's obviously the ongoing joke around tracksuit collectors and, and, and whatnot, and, and <laughs> collecting the tracksuits, but believe it or not, it, was, it, was, it just wasn't to be. And like I say, I had every intention of whatever club that I signed for to sort of be there for the long term. Um, and for whatever reason, it, it sort of didn't work out. Um, and it's like it, it's the same. It's the same now. It's just, it was the same last season. It's, I, I signed for a club with, with the sort of intentions of wanting to stay there for a few years or a good a good amount of time and sort of building the foundations and sort of working from there. But like I say, it's just it just sort of wasn't to be. And we, we won't count the loans in there. Uh, <laughs> loans don't count. Um, so I'm not sure how many it works out. I'll probably I'll say still, nine, eight or nine. Still probably five or four or five too many to be honest with you, but. Um, well, you may not, you may not have co- committed to a club for so long, but you've committed to a manager. Yeah, because you move clubs for a manager. Aside from the football itself, um, you work for Manchester United Foundation. Yeah, what was it that got you into that? Because that's that sounds like such an interesting old like side job for you to have, and it's I assume it's your job that you have as a main thing with the football being something that you do on the on your time off, really. Yeah, yeah, no. So it's it's full time, um, full time position. Then. I got into sort of, like I say, going back to when, when I was a little bit younger and it was just all football, football, football. And there's a sort of, there's a, a time in, in, in my life and I sort of realised that it's going to have to be another option. Um, it's, it's not always going to be full time. It's, it's not going to work out that way. Um, and I got into coaching. I got into going into primary school, sort of being a, being a sort of PE teacher and, and doing the sort of primary school sports coaching. And then it went, I, the, for the previous company that I was working for, I went more into the side of like behavior management and mentoring and coaching the the kids um, and giving them incentives on sort of like behavior management and character education programs. Um, and then from there, an opportunity to come up and move across to United. Um, and I, I, I sort of grabbed it with both hands, to be honest with you. And it's, it's, I've never looked back. I love, I love what I do. Um, I've sort of got a few roles within the club. Um, but like I say, I've got primarily sort of one full-time position and then the rest is sort of by the by. What's the, what would you say the best thing about this job is? Um, I like working with kids. I like I like I like working with the kids. I like sort of providing those opportunities and sort of being able to be, being able to do that. Um, and and obviously having a sort of club behind you is you can provide those opportunities for the children. Um, with it being tickets, tours, meeting the players, meeting the manager, um, and sort of really really sort of emphasizing those those dreams that the kids that the kids have. Um. It's 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 really fulfilling. So, yeah, I can imagine, especially when it's football with football, yeah, living and breathing football, which is good to see. Yeah. Well, that's that's the end of the first part. Thanks, Michael, for answering those questions. Before we move on to your time at Ashton, we're going to play a little game, and it's called Who Am I? So after talking about Michael's past, we are going to move on to Who Am I? A little game that we haven't played for a while. Um, essentially, we give you three clues and you've just got to guess the player who has played for Ashton this season. So we'll start with the first clue. I made 14 appearances for the Robins this season. So it's just the one clue, is it? Just the one. First of three. First First of three. First of three. Clue number two, I scored two goals this season. Yeah. And clue number three, I once played for a club that no longer exists. I think it's that really good centre midfielder, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we might be looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's myself. 
he fixes it himself. I'll, I'll reveal it a little bit later. But could you uh, imagine if you were wrong? <laughs> I, know, I, know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like Luca Havin scored twice. He scored more, hasn't he? he scored three. Has yeah. he? Oh, okay. <laughs> a shot in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, phenomenal. Well, you can yeah. continue then, can't you? I can well. continue. I can continue. So, obviously, that was a very quick round of who am I. We will talk <laughs> um, about your time at Ashton. Only, only been what a few months now? Is it four, five months, something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jake already touched on it briefly about uh, Clegg kind of bringing you to Ashton. Was there any other factors? behind that move or was it just solely after working with Clegg you wanted to work awesome, with again? Awesome media team. Yeah. Yeah. Well two out of three of them are really good, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no other than that, like I say, it was, it was a no brainer really. I sort of I, I moved to, to Everton to sort of um jump at the chance to sort of work with the management team and, and it, it sort of it made sense to move across as and when he was going. Um I just felt like I'd not had long enough to sort of work with them. Really enjoyed the time. And I thought a large part of that was, was down to the management team and, and them sort of bringing the best out of me. So um, it, it made sense on, on, on a few different levels to move across, really. Yeah. When you initially joined, um, it's fair to say the squad was in a bit of disarray. Results weren't going the right way. The season yeah. wasn't going as planned. Kind of what was the dressing room atmosphere like at that point? You know what? It was, re- it was really good. It was really good. There's a lot of, a, a lot of sort of good lads in there. Um, and even given the sort of position and, and situation he was in, the, the, the sort of morale was 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 really good. When I came across, like I say, I don't know whether, um, I think it was a, like a week after, obviously, Cleggy come in, that I, I, I come across and I don't know whether he'd sort of already put his stamp on there or whether lads are sort of chirping up to, to sort of make a little bit of an impression. But um, when, when I, like I say, when I come across, the dressing room was, was really good. Yeah. You mentioned as well, working under Clegg's management team, that, you know, you enjoyed it so much that you, you kind of wanted to experience it again. Yeah. What is it that makes them so different from every other management team you've worked with in your past? Um, maybe not maybe not different from everyone, but um, mm. for sure they, 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 they do it right. Do you know what I mean? They, they've got a good team that sort of, they, they bounce off each other, they, they're sort of pre- prepared um, and they, they do it right. They take it seriously. It's not just a sort of part-time thing for them. Uh, which is very much the case for me, and I think it's sort of similar in that respect. Was a sort of a, a, I want to do things right, and, and that's certainly what they sort of instill within the squad and within the team. It's 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 just that they're the, the doing things the right way, um, and the work rate is sort of phenomenal. So um, I think it sort of goes hand in hand, really. Yeah, during your time with the Robins, um, you've formed a formidable formation in midfield with uh, Rowney and Sheridan. Yeah. Why do you feel that trio has been so successful? I think that is the best trio, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, that's I, a second I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, However, I like it. I think I think we just work well together. Um, I think there's sort of a, a mixture of it all in there. Um, Shez likes to say that 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 we do his work for him and and, and things like that. But um, I, th- I think it just works really well. I think we all know each other's strengths, um, and and it's it just worked well. I mean. I can't remember what game it was now where I just think it sort of clicked. I think it was more off away. Um, and I just I just think that between between the sort of three of us, we had the sort of shared understanding. Um, and it just worked. It, it just worked. Is it nice to play in a team where you have that understanding or or is it something that, you know, has to develop over time to get even better? Or, or do you sometimes you get players where it just naturally happens? Yeah, and I think that's the case. I think it, it all differs on on the people and the players that you sort of involved with. And I think for me, with me, Shez and Rowney, I think it sort of it moved pretty quickly because we we was put in that situation, and we um, I think we played that formation the majority of the time. Um, and it, it it was the three of us in there. Um, so I I, th- I think we sort of didn't really have any other choice other than to do that. But I think it sort of sped up the processes. It wasn't sort of swapping and changing all the time. It wasn't. Um, different sort of formations and, and, and different sort of personnel in there. It's And it gives us the sort of time to, to buy two or three games, you sort of, you, I would like to think you would you would have that understanding, really. Yeah. One of your main highlights so far uh, with the Robins has to be the goal against Stafford, the late winner. Kind of talk us through the emotions after scoring that goal. I didn't really know what to do, could you tell? <laughs> <laughs> could, did you hear what Tom did? 
<laughs> what did he do? His voice broke on commentary. Oh, that's class. That's class. No, like I said, I didn't really know what to do. I, I just sort of set off running, looked up, seen a bench going wild. And I think I ended up doing a little bit of an Alan Shearer. Um, <laughs> and then I got, to, I got to the corner and I was like, what do I do now? Turn around and the lads were sort of catching me up. I mean, I don't think I've run that fast in, in the full game. Um, adrenaline just sort of took over when I was off. There was sort of no catching me, but um, no, it was a good feeling. I, I think we sort of, we, we, we had a bit of a wake up call at half time and I think it was a massive game and looking back now, you don't realise how big the game was. Obviously, we knew it at the time and it was a big game, but it was massive. It was a huge game and even a draw at that stage would have just kept things a sort of open a little bit and, and I just think it sort of helps us pull away and, and kick start really then, so... Yeah, Speaking definitely. just quickly, touching on the Stafford game, I remember interviewing you afterwards, and one of the things you made clear to us was, "Don't rely on me to score." And I swear yeah. you scored like a week later. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I you made it a habit now. Actually. Yeah, I know. I know. I think we finished the season with four, and it doesn't seem a right lot, but they seem to have been in the in the right, the, the, like the goals and the sort of spread out across the season. And it was a few of them was important goals, so I think it, it sort of uh, sort of multiplies the effect a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, he scored an important goal for Everton as well against, was it Boston in the FA Trophy? Yeah, FA Trophy, yeah. Last, I think that was, again, was like 93rd minute or something like that. Last sort of kick of the game to to sort of go through into the next round, which we wasn't actually there to play the next round against Barrow. But um, I think that was actually, that was actually um, Cleggie's last game in charge. Wow. Um, Did you pull out the shearer there? I can't remember. I probably did, you know. Again, I must love the corner flags because I was at the corner flag again. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was actually. I think everybody sort of met at the corner flag at that point because it was such a big goal. So yeah, you do love your big goals. Um, before as well, when we were talking, you mentioned that after that result, the kind the team hit um, a good run of form. Why do you feel that was? I think I think momentum plays a massive part in football, and I think when you're going into games confident, like towards when when we was in that run and we were sort of moving forward with the games, and it was coming at a sort of quick pace, and we was getting win after win. Um, for me, I was going into a game and I couldn't really see where we was going to get beat. Not from a not from an arrogance point of view, but from a, a a sort of confidence within the sort of lads and the group that I knew that like there was people on the bench to come off the bench and, and sort of make a massive impact. I just think we was in a good place. I think confidence was high within a lot of people. Um, and I think if you've got sort of eight or nine or nine or ten sort of firing at, at firing, and I think I think it helps massively. And, and I think we just all had that sort of confidence and, and um, belief that we was going to go and get three points. Even if it was like late on in the game, I think there was sort of still that belief within a lot of people that we, we, we could still go on. Or even if there was quite a few times we went a goal behind. Um, and then, and then, as soon as that, as soon as the equaliser went in, it was a case of just a matter of time until we scored again. Um, so no, I think I think the momentum played a massive part in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I know the answer to this one, but what has your favourite moment been so far in an Ashton shirt? It's got to be the last minute winner, hasn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, said anything different? Yeah. Similar theme on that question as well. What is the best part about playing for Ashton? Um, I think I, I think it's a great club. I think the, the people from top to bottom. Uh, that's one thing I have noticed from from top to bottom in the club. Behind the scenes, um, everyone works tirelessly hard across the league. But I think the people at, at Ashton um, made me feel welcome from the start. And like I say, it has only been four or five months since I've been there, but I've really enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, the lads have been great. Um, the sort of staff and, and, and sort of volunteers and, and, and everybody. Um, involved in the club has been fantastic so it, it's a great club to sort of play for um and with, with people throughout the club that are sort of doing the right things as well so yeah definitely everyone pulling in one direction is helping out yeah for sure. has anyone else got any other questions for michael no i think that no. rounds up man no, that rounds up lovely it does we'll move on to spill the beans then <laughs> Right, so Spill the Beans, as per usual, is where we will ask our guest, in this case, Michael, some questions that will relate to maybe the club or himself in hopefully a light-hearted manner. First <laughs> one we've got in this little section is, who would you say is the funniest player at Ashton? Uh, um, 
I'm sure, I'm sure someone else has said this, but I'm going to have to say Lafudu. Yeah. Yeah, Look, yeah. To be fair, it's a quote for actually. Lafudu doesn't mean to be, and, and it's the same with John O. John O doesn't mean to be. <laughs> some of John O's one line is a brilliant. Um, and he, he's got sort us of so quick with him as well, and it just gets it, it gets everyone to be fair. But Lafudu doesn't really mean to be funny, but he just is. He's just he's just one of them guys. He's brilliant. So you're laughing with John and you're laughing at Lafudu. <laughs> I don't even think it's that. Lafudu's <laughs> picked up on like the mannerisms, and he, he he'll sort of mimic John and stuff like that, and he's <laughs> so funny, so funny. Um, leading on from that question, what is the strangest moment you've experienced in football? Ooh. I don't know. Probably holding my own ankle up when I broke my leg. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Bad break. I've gone in for a tackle. It, it wasn't really a bad break, but I heard the crack and the next thing, I had like a big golf ball coming out my outside of my leg. Uh, obviously underneath the stock, but I've gone in for a tackle and I heard it crack. So straight away, I thought it was going to be one of them where it's like sort of floppy. It, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't. It was just the um, fibula that I'd, that I'd broken. It was just a clean break. But I'd heard it going into the tackle. So it was one of them where my sort of first instincts was to just sort of grab them both and sit on the floor. How long and, were you out for? It wasn't that long, to be honest. I think it was just shy of just over two months, I think it was. Um, wow. Just over two months before I sort of back playing. Um it was a clean break. I didn't need an operation, you see. Um, but no, that, that gas and air stuff really good. It helped. <laughs> <laughs> it's good experience of breaking it more often. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, I, remember being on, I remember using it when the ambulance turned up. He was playing at Burnley at the time. <laughs> and the guy said to me, he was like, I was in a lot of pain, obviously, and I'm using this, this gas and air breathing thing. And get the, the paramedic said to me, he said, slow down on that, mate. And I was like, honestly, I need to use it. The, the pain's that bad. And then two minutes later, I remember him said to me again, slow down. And as, I, as he said it, I've looked up and I couldn't even see him. I mean, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> um, and then throughout your career, who would you say the best player you've played with is? Uh, played with us and sort of in a team? Yeah, yeah. Um, or against? 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 I played against Yanazai for the United Reserves. He was he was unbelievable. Yeah. And then... Um, couldn't get near him. Couldn't get near him, but with... Uh, I'm not sure. I've only sort of really played on league. I'm not... No sort of... No sort of mad, mad career. I wouldn't really know, to be honest with you. Fair enough, fair enough. JP is just there like, I've been with you all along. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> good, fair, JP is technically, technically so, so good. Yeah. And I, I always say to him, I always say to him, it looks so much better when you're left-footed. Yeah, I think it, it, it just looks so much better. Yeah. Especially with the set pieces um, as well, yeah. Yeah, so we'll give it, um, we'll give, we'll give it JP. A little pity shot. You're welcome. In there. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, if Michael Craig didn't exist, give us one manager you'd love to work under. Um, who have who have not worked under before? Yeah, we'll go with that. Um. I don't really pay much attention to any anybody else. Me, you know. I don't really sort of pay attention to other clubs or anything like that. But uh, what, what about in like world football then, like top divisions as well? If you could choose any world manager, like Chuck Jurgen Klopp in there or something. Yeah, but not him because he's, he's definitely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. not. And things like that. I think I think yeah. he'd, have, he'd have everybody working in the sort of same direction, which I think again is is sort of. Massive to to build in any sort of successful team, so we'll go Pep. I love Pep Guardiola. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one, bit of a weird request. This one, could you do an impression of Michael Clegg for us? Oh, I don't even really know what he said. It's that Bolton accent, isn't it? I'm not. I've not really, not really got them down to a T. And what do you say? Can't think what he says. Uh, I'm trying to think about when he had, when he had a go at us at the, the after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's not get myself in trouble too much. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Any, anything in a man accent will do, will not it? Yeah. <laughs> not really man. He's from Bolton, but yeah. Yeah. It's uh, all the same to Sean. It is, yeah, same there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> If you thought that one was weird, uh, if you were a wrestler, what would your name be and what would your walkout music be? 
Jesus. Well, you <laughs> right, who's yeah. come up with that question? Wow. Who's come up with these questions? Is that you, Tom? Yeah. Tom sent that across this morning, yeah. <laughs> John. No, no, no Tom. You never come up with those. Um, <laughs> something along the lines of Brewster, for sure. Um, yeah. and, and walkout song. God knows, probably traditional Wonderwall or something like that, but it's not really a wrestler song, that is it, to be honest. Nah, that was it, get the crowd going, wouldn't it? Come yeah. on, probably me, had like um, Kieran Wood with his sort of tribute to, to Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> what, after a game, what's the best food that you've had supplied by the club or a club that you visited? Oh, this is, this is a massive sort of point as well, by the way. When you go to a club and they've got good food on it, it's so good. Uh, <laughs> I think Staley, was it Staley Bridge? Staley Bridge this season with Ashton, I think their food was brilliant. I think they had like a, a variety of like steak baguettes and then they had like a, a chicken curry and all. Um, I'll, I'll go with Staley Bridge. We'll have to put Staley Bridge away. What was the Irish for, Tom? <laughs> um, before we started recording, I said Staley Bridge. Yeah, he said yeah. it's made to be fair, yeah. Morford yeah, yeah. treated us quite well as well, I thought. Yeah, so apart from chasing the guy around to get the footage, that wasn't nice. Yeah, more was good, right? And you needed that before you had a 19 hour journey home as well. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? It's you, I think. I think it's you. Oh, no, it's me. It's me. It is me. Sorry, <laughs> mate. Sorry. Um, worst haircut at the club. Oh, it had to be that Tom. Yeah. You know what? It's 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 going to be a sort of similar answer, but I'm even going to elaborate on it a little bit more because I was jumped on Facetime with him the other day, and it's just got worse. It, it, it's Ben Hardcastle, and the curtains have got bigger, the fringe has got longer. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Ben Hardcastle, but he loves it. He loves it. He can lock down it him hard then. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just imagine imagine before before lockdown times like the nine weeks that he's not had it cut. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. will he be bought, will he be tying it up next season then? I would imagine so. I would imagine if it stays the way it is, he'll need a headband for sure. I'm gonna have to get him on on um, Ben Langford's haircut here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we talked about goal celebrations before with the classic Shearer. Uh, what's your next goal celebration gonna be? Thought we'd get it in. Oh, adrenaline will take over me. I could say one thing and do the completely opposite. I know straight to the corner flag again, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> to the corner flag again and, and, and sort of try and take out whatever I can nearby, whether it be something <laughs> with me or whatever else. But yeah. Um, we've also got a regular question here. If a film was to be made about your life, yeah, uh, what would you play? Like, who would you have play your character, and what would you name the show or the film? I think the best one we've had so far was Rowney. He had Miss, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I, mean, I remember watching that. Was <laughs> one that was, uh, I can't remember who it was that killed him with that one, but he, he, he takes it. I'd have to go Will Smith for the, for the character, just because I like what he's about. I like what he does. He's, um, in terms of a sort of, in terms of a sort of um, title, I don't really know. Um, what would it 101 clubs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Club 101. Yeah. We'll go with that one. I like that. Love it. Uh, um, final question. One player you would love to join Ashton next season? Ooh. I've got a. I'm going to. I'll say, I'll say it as. I'll, I'll say it. I'll go with. Um, a sort of good friend of mine when I was at when I was at Northwich. He's a great player and a great lad. And and I'll go with uh, Alex Byrne. I think he's just moved to Matlock. Uh, um, he's 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 a he's a big character, um, but he's a top top player, top top player. Um, I've never seen anybody get as many crosses in the box as him. And I think if you get the right striker who plays with him, they, they score many many goals. Um, so we'll go Alex Byrne. Perfect. Lovely. Well that moves us very nicely on to the future with Sean. Yeah, so just a quick section about your future. Um, obviously, it's going to be a full season uh, at Ashton next season. Where would you like to see the club at this time next year? Uh, going up. Promotion, nice and easy. 
Might be in the team of the season then as well, if you play well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take over your questions, Sean, because I'm going to refuse to answer them. <laughs> Storm out. Yeah. Um, obviously, top down. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you're still young. Um, how far do you see yourself climbing in football? Um, I'd like to sort of, I'd like to sort of go up to the next level for sure. Whether it's Conference North, and and hopefully we can do, we can do that um, sort of together with Ashton, and and, and sort of further from there as well. I'd, I'd definitely sort of like to like to um, give it a go in the, in the sort of Conference North and, and play regular. I've been at this sort of level for for a good few years now from from a young age. Um, so yeah, no, for sure, and I'd, I'd like to do that obviously with Ashton and, and, and sort of go forward with the club as well. So. And you mentioned before, every time you've joined a club, you've kind of had that intention to stay. Mm-hmm. With, the, with the project being built at Ashton, is that kind of ideal for you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and like I say, I, I get on with Cleggie and, and, and the rest of the team, he'll be Paz, each us. Um, and, and it's like, it's, I think it's been, under, it's been less than 12 months that I've actually worked with them for now, but it feels like it's been years, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I think that's sort of, that's only a sort of that's it's got to be a positive, do you know what I mean? So I think I think moving forward, um, I think they sort of bring the best out in in, in me, and 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 I'd, I'd like to do that moving forward for sure. Yeah, definitely. And then obviously you mentioned it before as well, your job at United Foundation. How hard do you find it to kind of balance your job playing and outside of football? You kind of prioritise what? Um, I, I managed to do it quite well, to be honest with you. And the reason yeah. why is because I'm primarily based in a school. Um, right. So my hours sort of consist around being in a school, um, if that makes sense. So it doesn't really ever affect. The only time that it can do is if it's sort of a far away game and the coach is leaving at like three. Um, but I've got a good relationship with with head teacher, and and if it ever can't sort of be met, then it's nothing to drive up. Do you know what I mean? There's not there's no yeah. far away game that's ever longer than sort of three hours in a car so I can always sort of jump in my car and drive if needs be so yeah I kind of I kind of I'm lucky in that respect and it's it sort of works around my football so I do like a, I have a match day role as well where I look after like the, the mascots the mascots who walk out with the players yeah and again I, I, I can choose which dates and games that I can do around my football you see so it, it works quite well yeah. Tom, you mentioned how st- oh, you wanted to do that hmm. you always wanted to be a mascot <laughs> United Linesman oh. <laughs> oh, I'd love that seeing him run down the sidelines. Line My chance. <laughs> Mike Dean giving him orders. <laughs> um, but yeah, it seems like you've settled down both in football and out of football. Then, um, in five times, where would you like to see yourself? Five years time, sorry. Um, in five times, I'd like to see myself. Um, five times. <laughs> um, in five in five years, I've well, I've just recently moved house, so. So I'll be happy here for another five years. Um, I don't want to go through that stress again. Um, very much sort of continuing the same path, really. And like I say, I'm happy and content in what I'm doing with football and with work. Um, obviously, I, I never sort of want to stand still and I'm always sort of wanting to progress. So uh, whether that's in the same avenue or, or a different avenue, whether it's work professionally, personally. Um, so just keep keeping progressing, really. And there's, there's lots of opportunities to do so both within football and, and obviously within work. So uh, just to sort of continuously keep moving forward. Yeah. And you mentioned coaching before as well. Could we ever see Michael Brewster on the sidelines as a manager himself? Oh, definitely. When I finish playing football, I, I'd, I'd love to get into it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, 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 and, and like I say, I'm only young, but I've, I've sort of worded, worded my, uh, my girlfriend up on that one already. That it's, it's not yeah. too She's always wanting to go on a skiing holiday and whatnot, and it just can't happen. So... Um, just to put it off a little bit longer as well. And obviously, you currently you coach kids um, at Man United, and we've caught, we've seen the academy being so successful there. Yeah. Um, this season, Ashton's brought in their own youth teams. How important do you think that could be for the community and for the club? Um, very much so, and I, I think the community side of it and and the the aspect of, of sort of bringing everybody together. I, I love that concept, um, and 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 sort of bringing bringing the young sort of younger people through. Um, the, the sort of fan base that they bring and this sort of enthusiasm is is, is brilliant. So it'd be love. It, it'd be great to sort of get a lot, a few more school kids through uh, through the doors and through the gates and sort of supporting the club. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's massive in terms of getting everybody moving in the right direction, the same direction, and people from from the sort of local community being proud of the club and and, and what we're doing on the pitch. 
Right, well, I think that perfectly rounds up, unless anyone's got anything else to add. No, no, no. no it's all good. Right, I think it's just in good time. Yeah, Old sounds dogs. like it, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, well, thanks very much, Michael, for joining us today. Hopefully, hopefully next time we get you in, you'll be in Sean's good books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just next Same time, time next year. Call next time, and just don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much anyway thank you for everyone for watching cheers sean and tom and see you see you again soon